It's over three times taller than the Eiffel Tower. Once completed, it will be the first building on Earth to rise beyond one kilometer into the sky. This is the Jeddah Tower, Saudi Arabia's most ambitious mega project and the future tallest skyscraper in the world. Towering over 1,000 meters high, it will break every record held by the Burj Khalifa. With 168 floors and the highest observation deck ever built, it's the centerpiece of a $20 billion city rising from the Red Sea coast. After years of silence and setbacks, construction has officially resumed. The goal? Complete a floor every four days and finish by 2028. Inside, luxury hotels, elite offices, sky lobbies, and homes in the clouds. Outside, the eyes of the world are watching. But what does it take to build the tallest structure in human history? And can they really finish it by 2028? Let's find out. It all began with a big question. How do you make the world pay attention to Saudi Arabia? Not just for oil or business, but for something bold and new. The answer? Build something that grabs attention from miles away. A tower so tall, it makes the rest of the skyline look tiny. That's the Jeddah Tower, a vertical city in the sky. The centerpiece of a $20 billion dream called the Jeddah Economic City. So what exactly is this city? It's a brand new district rising from the desert, right along the Red Sea coast, just north of Jeddah spanning over 5.3 million square meters. It's planned to have everything, homes, office towers, shopping zones, hotels, hospitals, and even green parks. And right in the middle of it all, a skyscraper that will shoot more than 1,000 meters into the air. But when did this all begin? The idea took shape in the mid-2000s. By 2013, they began digging and laying the foundation. Things were moving fast. By 2017, the tower had reached 63 floors. But then everything stopped. In 2018, labor issues, missed payments, and a national anti-corruption drive brought the project to a halt. Machines sat still. The core of the tower stood unfinished waiting in silence. For almost seven years, nothing moved. But did the dream fade away? Not at all. In 2023, something big happened. The project was brought back to life. A global call for contractors went out and proposals poured in. New engineers joined, and by early 2025, work officially restarted. The tower is now past its 64th floor, taller than many city skylines, yet still not even halfway done. So what's behind this giant comeback? One answer, Vision 2030. Saudi Arabia is aiming for more. It wants to move past oil and focus on tourism, clean energy, and building new things. And right in the middle of that plan, the Jeddah Tower. So is it still about ambition? Not really. That part's already clear. The real question is, can this giant overcome the tough challenges ahead? From technical limits, to the environment, to the rising costs? To find out, we have to go deeper, right into the heart of the foundations of the most ambitious skyscraper the world has ever seen. From a distance, Jeddah Tower looks like a spear rising from the sand. But have you ever wondered what holds up something so tall in such a harsh environment? Up close, the engineering story gets even more incredible. The ground beneath the tower isn't solid rock. Instead, it's a mix of limestone, sand, and coral rock. Not the kind of stuff you'd want to build a megastructure on. So how do you support a building this heavy on such weak soil? The answer lies deep underground. Engineers drilled 270 giant concrete piles into the earth. Each one goes down as far as 110 meters. That's longer than a football field. These piles carry the tower's weight deep into the stronger layers of ground below. On top of them sits a massive concrete pad. 
It's five meters thick and spreads across more than 7,500 square meters. That's like laying a concrete floor over one and a half football fields. Together, this foundation supports more than 900,000 tons of weight. To put that in perspective, that's about 150,000 elephants stacked on top of each other. But holding up the tower is only part of the story. What about its shape? Unlike the Burj Khalifa's stepped tiers, Jeddah Tower rises with smooth, gentle slopes. It's shaped like a desert flower stretching toward the sky. The tower has three wings that reach out from a strong center. This Y-shaped base isn't just for beauty, it's the key to the tower's strength. Why does shape matter? Because as you build higher, the wind becomes a powerful enemy. At one kilometer up, the wind can shake and twist a building. That's why Jetta Tower's design lets the wind glide around it instead of pushing hard against it. Engineers tested it in wind tunnels over and over again. They studied the slopes, the angles, even the outer skin of the tower. Every piece of the shape was chosen to help the tower survive high-speed gusts. To stop the tower from swaying too much, the core is packed with ultra-thick concrete and strong steel. Special stiffeners and dampers run through it, making the tower bend just enough, but not too much. But even with that solved, how do you get people all the way up? You can't just have one elevator going from bottom to top. That's why the tower has 59 elevators, including five double-deck ones. They zoom up at more than 10 meters per second. People switch elevators at three sky lobbies placed at different heights. And the whole system runs on a brand new cable made from carbon fiber, lighter and stronger than old school steel ropes. Way up on the 157th floor, a sky terrace will give visitors a jaw-dropping view of the Red Sea. At over 600 meters above the ground, it will be the tallest observation deck on Earth. But building something this big takes time and a lot of effort. Even now, it takes four full days to finish just one floor. Crews work day and night. Machines lift concrete higher than ever before, bucket by bucket, pump by pump. Then, when concrete can't go any higher, steel steps in. The last 350 meters will be built with steel frames, holding important systems and a glowing spire on top. Inside, every bit of space is put to good use. Offices, a fancy hotel, more than 500 apartments, 121 serviced suites, and high-end stores. It's built to be a whole city in the sky. But is it just about luxury and height? Not at all. This tower is also built to protect the planet. How? It faces away from direct sun to stay cooler. Its shiny glass skin reflects heat. The air conditioners reuse water they collect. And the fresh air for cooling? It's pulled in from high up, where it's naturally cooler. Even the tower's shape casts shadows that help keep the inside from getting too hot. And what about power? Sure, the tower uses a lot, but it also saves a lot. Special elevators send power back into the system as they work. LED lights and smart sensors turn things off when not needed. And that fancy glass? It's coated to block heat from the sun without blocking the view. Still, is it just the features that make Jetta Tower special? Not really. What really makes it stand out is what it's had to face. Delays, shutdowns, even a pandemic, and then a full stop in building for nearly seven years. So why is it starting again in 2025? Because new money came in, global companies showed interest, and the country decided it was time to finish what it started. But is reaching one kilometer just about building higher? Not quite. Air gets thinner up there, pressure drops, materials act in new ways, and even moving tools and supplies to the top takes longer and gets harder. Still, floor by floor, level by level, the tower keeps going up. When finished, it won't only claim the title of the tallest structure in the world, 
it will reshape how engineers, architects, and city planners think about the vertical future. What do you think? Visionary leap into the future or just an overambitious symbol of wealth? Drop your thoughts below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications.